Here's what's making news now around Indiana, brought to you by Chapman Heating, Air Conditioning and Plumbing, the man for all seasons. Chapman, chapmanheating.com. Well, the 500 will always be synonymous with Indianapolis, of course, but there's one Indiana city that is arguably just as important to the greatest spectacle in racing. Around Indiana reporter Mary Rachel Redmond sits down with one longtime IMS executive and a former three-time Indy 500 winner to find out why the Speedway's modern-day roots trace back to Vigo County. Uh, arguably, if it wasn't for Terre Haute, there would not be an Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The flag starts the Terre Haute, the city that saved the track. Its favorite son, Tony Holman. Last Memorial Day Classic just before Pearl Harbor brought us into the Second World War. From 1942 to 45, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway sat idle. It was in miserable condition. Tall weeds all around the track and the wooden stands were all falling apart. That's when three-time Indy 500 winner Wilbur Shaw approached a young Terre Haute businessman by the name of Tony Holman. Tony Holman became the willing buyer and it was his goal to make the Indianapolis 500 to Indianapolis and Indiana what the Kentucky Derby is to Louisville and Kentucky. From the outset, Holman used his resources in Terre Haute to get the track race ready for 1946. The first thing he did was bring his crews from Holman and Company to clear the weeds. And the uh, S.H. Pauley uh, Lumber Company here in Terre Haute provided a lot of the lumber. Uh, a lot of the crews came from Terre Haute. And that kind of set the tone for many years of the Speedway's operation. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Holman would embark on the most expansive building program in track history. It expanded the seating, provided a, a golf course, both inside and outside the track. The first corporate suites in racing were at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Scoring pylon, which we're all familiar with, the first one was a product of, of Tony Holman. It's hard to believe now, but Wabash Avenue back in the 50s was hopping with race fans. The Holmans brought drivers to downtown Terre Haute, and it was an experience like none other. Growing up in Terre Haute, it was like being in Indianapolis. Clark Gable he spent a lot of time in Terre Haute. Wabash Avenue filled with tens of thousands of people from storefront to Tony's old Jaguar. And in some cases, drivers made the 75 mile trek to Terre Haute just to have a little fun. There are stories about with Bobby Unser's recent death and how he and uh, Al Unser became, um, um, well, the rental car companies wouldn't rent cars to them. <laughs> We had a car end up in a swimming pool here, uh, courtesy of a race car driver. Race drivers in those days were hard living guys. I met up with IMS legend Johnny Rutherford at the Speedway this week and asked the three time Indy 500 champ his thoughts on Terre Haute and the lasting legacy of Tony Holman. I have warm spot for Terre Haute, for sure. And now, let's meet that Hoosier gentleman, the president of the Speedway, Tony Holman. Tony Holman, he was a wonderful man. He felt so strongly about this Indianapolis Motor Speedway that every year, if you knew where to go and look for him, you could hear him practicing, gentlemen, start your engines. Had, a, had it written down on a card. Gentlemen, start your engine! Most of the uh, top executives uh, at the Motor Speedway uh, had a Terre Haute uh, connection. Uh, time has moved on, that is no longer true. But uh, we're very proud in Terre Haute of being a, a part of the Indianapolis 500 story. Mary Rachel Redman, Inside Indiana Business.